Greetings and welcome to the Saroth the Mage Experiment. Today I will be attempting to read from a rather cheap edition of Henry Cornelius Agrippa's Three Books of Occult Philosophy. This is Chapter 3, Book 3. What dignification is required that one may be a true magician and a worker of miracles? About the beginning of the first book of this work, we have spoken what manner of person a magician ought to be. But now we will declare a mystical and secret matter, necessary for everyone who desires to practice this art, which is both the beginning, perfection, and key of all magical operations. And it is the dignifying of men to this so sublime virtue and power, for this faculty requires in man a wonderful dignification. For that the understanding which is in us, the highest faculty of the soul, is the only worker of wonders, which when it is overwhelmed by too much commerce with the flesh, and busied about the sensible soul of the body, is not worthy of the command of divine substances. Therefore many prosecute this art in vain. Therefore it is meet that we who endeavour to attain to so great a height should especially meditate of two things. First, how we should leave carnal affections, frail sense and material passions. Secondly, by what way and means we may ascend to an intellect pure and conjoined with the powers of the gods, without which we shall never happily ascend to the scrutiny of secret things, and to the power of wonderful workings or miracles. For in these dignification consists wholly, which nature, desert, and a certain religious art do make up. Natural dignity is the best disposition of the body and its organs, not obscuring the soul with any grossness and being without all distemper. And this proceeds from the situation, motion, light and influence of the celestial bodies and the spirits which are conversant in the generation of every one. As are those whose ninth house is fortunate by Saturn, Sol and Mercury, Mars also in the ninth house commands the spirits, but concerning these things we have largely treated in the books of the stars. But whoso is not such a one, it is necessary that he recompense the defect of nature by education, and the best ordering and prosperous use of natural things, until he become complete in all, intrinsically and extrinsical perfections. Hence so, great care is taken in the law of Moses concerning the priest, that he be not polluted by a dead carcass, or by a woman, a widow, or menstruous, that he be free from leprosy, flux of blood, burstness, and be perfect in all his members, not blind, nor lame, nor crooked back, or with an ill-favoured nose. And Apuleius said in his apology that the youth to be initiated to divination by magic spells ought to be chosen, sound without sickness, ingenious, comely, perfect in his members, of a quick spirit, eloquent in speech, that in him the divine power might be conversant as in the good houses, that the mind of the youth, having quickly attained experience, may be restored to its divinity. But the meritorious dignity is perfected by two things, namely learning and practice. The end of learning is to know the truth. It is meet, therefore, as is spoken in the beginning of the first book, that he be learned and skilful in those three faculties. Then all impediments being removed, wholly to apply his soul to contemplation and to convert itself into itself. For there is, even in our own selves, 
the apprehension and power of all things. But we are prohibited, so as that we little enjoy these things, by passions opposing us even from our birth, and vain imaginations, and immoderate affections, which being expelled, the divine knowledge and power presently takes place. But the religious operation obtains no less efficacy, which of times of itself alone is sufficiently powerful for us to obtain this deifying virtue. So great is the virtue of holy duties, rightly exhibited and performed, that though they be not understood, yet piously and perfectly observed, and with a firm faith believed, they have no less efficacy than to adorn us with a divine power. But what dignity is acquired by the art of religion is perfected by certain religious ceremonies, expiations, consecrations, and holy rites. Proceeding from him whose spirit the public religion hath consecrated, who hath power of imposition of hands, and of initiating with sacramental poor, by which the character of the divine virtue and power is stamped on us, which they call the divine consent, by which a man, supported with the divine nature, and made, as it were, and companion of the angels, bears the engrafted power of God. And this rite is referred to the ecclesiastical mysteries. If therefore now thou shalt be a man, perfect in the sacred understanding of religion, and piously and most constantly meditates on it, and without doubting believes, and art such an one whom the authority of holy rites and nature have conferred the dignity above others, and one whom the divine powers condemn not, thou shalt be able, by praying, consecrating, sacrificing, evocating, to attract spiritual and celestial powers, and to imprint them on those things thou pleases, and by it to vivify every magical work. But whosoever, beyond the authority of his office, without the merit of sanctity and learning, beyond the dignity of nature and education, shall presume to work anything in magic, shall work in vain, and deceive both himself and those that believe on him, and with danger incur the displeasure of the divine powers. Thank you very much. Goodbye.